So today's reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians and it's, um, it's beautiful as are almost all the readings, but, uh, or all the readings I should say, but uh, there's one particular line here which I think is very, very important to hone in on. Put on God's armor, armor so as to be able to resist the devil's tactics. For it is not against human enemies that we have to struggle, but against the sovereignties and the powers who originate the darkness of this world. I'll read that one again. For it is not against the human enemies that we have to struggle, but against the sovereignties and powers who originate the darkness of this world, the spiritual army of evil in the heavens. Now, obviously, when we say in the heavens, they would mean in the sky, not in heaven. Heaven um, yeah, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. It does not mean that heaven will pass away. It means the sky, as in the earth, as we know it, will eventually end. Okay, so, so that means, like St. Paul is underlining here, the fact that there are spiritual realities that surround us. <coughs> there are spiritual realities in our world, that temptation is real, that demons are real, that all of this, uh, all of this, this, this darkness, all right, that there are spiritual forces out there encouraging it. Now we have to be careful here, not to see Satan under every stone, because that can kind of say, well, that can kind of, we can delegate our responsibility for our own actions. I mean, I got drunk, but the devil made me do it. You know what I mean? I was watching TV all night and kind of didn't do my, didn't fulfill my responsibilities. Oh, the, the devil made me do it. <laughs> no, man up, all right. Take responsibility for, for your own actions. But at the same time, you see, the, the, the enemy the enemy is very, very smart. He's very, I was going to say very, very good. That'd be a contradiction in terms. Um, he's very, he knows us very well. Okay? So he doesn't, uh, he can't take our freedom. The, when we absolutely, completely lose our freedom to him, uh, that is possession. And that's very, very rare. Very, very rare. Uh, it can happen, but it, it's very, very rare. For most of us, we're, we're just subject to temptation. So how does that work? Well, I mean, he knows us and he knows our weaknesses uh, and our weaknesses may differ. Like, for example, I mean, I will never be tempted to alcoholism because it just doesn't bother me. I couldn't care less. A nice pint now with a pizza once a month and I'm good. I never, I'd never woken up in the middle of the night going, gee, I'd love a pint. I mean, I just, it just doesn't bother me, really. So that won't, that, but I could be tempted to all sorts of other things, you know, maybe pride or arrogance or whatever it may be. Um, <coughs> But there are certain things that I won't, certain areas where I won't be tempted because it's just not, it's just not going to work. Other areas, other weaknesses that absolutely uh, I can be tempted in. So it might be different for all of us. You know, our area, our weaknesses will be different. But he works just like a, a good boxer. If a good boxer lands a good punch, and I know, I know, I just, I'm after sculling the fellow right over the eye there. I'm after maybe making him bleed for the rest of the boxing match then, you're just getting a couple of jabs, but that's the point you want to go for again, because that's the weakness. That's where you've hurt him. So that's what the enemy does. He knows that he finds our weakness, and then that's what he just kind of constantly encourages. And it's amazing that the enemy uh, in and of himself is so hideously ugly, but temptation is always so seductively attractive. He in, in and of himself, right, is just like, you know, a creature that's full of hatred. Okay, and let's keep in mind the ultimate end of what he's trying to do here. He wants you to be separated from God for all eternity, otherwise known as hell. He hates you. Okay, so the, the ultimate goal isn't to say, Ash, look, I mean, I broke a couple of rules, sorry. Uh, it's, he wants you in hell forever. That's the ultimate goal. If you're really clear that, uh, you know, as, I said, as, as I've said before, there can kind of be this erroneous idea that God has a plan for our happiness. Uh, which involves rules and commandments, and the enemy has a plan for our happiness, which involves lots of Saturday night fever and uh, having the crack. And at the end of the day, you go to heaven anyway. Well, the enemy's way sounds like way more fun. And you go to heaven anyway, so why bother with rules and commandments and guilt and all that kind of stuff? Just have fun. You go to heaven anyway, it's great. That's what my generation believes, and the generation after me, now that I'm the generation of many of the parents of today. Uh, yeah, that's what we believe. You go to heaven anyway, so why not just have the crack? There are no consequences. Like Big, huge, fat lie. That one right there.
Okay, there are consequences and we are accountable for our actions. We are. You know, telling people they're not is just a, 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 a horrifically dangerous temptation. <clears throat> I'm responsible for my actions or lack thereof, for my lack of action, if action is required. So we're struggling against these, these spiritual forces which are real and which surround us and which will encourage our weaknesses, <clears throat> whatever they may be. Just encourage them, kind of nudge us in that direction. But what's really interesting about the enemy, though, is he encourages us to do something. So say, for example, it's, let's just take alcoholism. Right, so uh, he encourages you, go on, just have another pint, come on, you've done this a million times before, one more makes no difference. I know your girlfriend doesn't know you because you're drinking too much, but look, what does she know? She's always does mouth and on. One pint, it's only a pint. It's one little, what's one little pint between friends? You know, and then you have the pint and sure, look, I mean, sure, a small little glass, a small little glass of vodka, sure, what could possibly go wrong? Right, lads, I'll have three rounds of vodka. Do you know what I mean? I mean, sure, and then like before, you know, you're vomiting all over the place, and the following morning, look at you. Right, the same tempting voice that was saying, it's all grand. The following morning, look at you, you look at the smell of you. You're, jo- oh, you're, you're a disgrace. What's your girlfriend going to say? And you want to be a family father, and you want to go to mass now, do you? Hmm? Do you? you? Want to go to mass, do you? Right, yeah. Look at the, you're, you're an embarrassment. The very same voice that tempts you to do the thing accuses you of doing it afterwards. See, so, you, so you're never at peace. You see, he'll never leave you at peace. You're encouraged to do the thing, you fall, and then you're despicable. You're 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 a disaster. Look, the world would actually be just that little bit better off without you. You know, and you see, I get just little by little by little, temptation after temptation, failure after failure, then you really begin to feel at the end, look, sure, does anyone really know I'm here? Does anyone really care? Do I actually make a difference at all? And it only, you start up with small little temptations, but you see how far it can go so quickly. You don't matter. No one would miss you. No one cares. And then you see how we go from what seems like, you know, a couple of, excessive nights out to someone standing on the edge of a bridge. This is what happens, you see. So this is how it works. So it, we, we can't say Satan made me do it because it's still my freedom, but he does encourage me to do the wrong things and actually not only encourage me to do the wrong things, but paint the wrong things with such a, a beautiful, uh, pinky, glittery, if that's what you find attractive, camo for the lads. Or he paints it in camo to make it look attractive. And, uh, and, and then... It looks attractive, but then when you engage in it, do it, fall into it, you're accused. And then you feel like a failure, like rubbish. And now if we stay on that, on that trajectory, it ends in death. It ends in death. Maybe not necessarily physical death, but always spiritual death. Separation from God is spiritual death. So like it's, it's, it's really, really dangerous. It's really dangerous. And that's why also... The expression, I'm spiritual, is absolutely ridiculous. It's chronically dangerous. Okay? That's like saying, do you know, I like food. Good? What kind of food? <laughs> right? Because if you say, I like food, I start my day on a box of celebrations. Uh, and then when I've drooled my way through most of those, I roll over to the fridge, right? And I get full fat coke and uh, drinks about like four of them and then I order takeaway because I, I can I can't stand up and make dinner so I have a Chinese takeaway for lunch and then there's a McDonald's around the corner so I can kind of drive over I don't even have to walk like I just drive over and I order the window and they give me like I, no joke a friend of mine in America said he saw a lady in one of those remote control wheelchair things one of those <laughs> go through a drive through and he knew why she was in the wheelchair. She couldn't, she was so obese, she couldn't, she couldn't actually walk anymore. And it was actually an actual addiction to food. She ordered <coughs> like four or five meals, you know, in her little basket thing in the front and then drives, drives off home. There's an actual addiction to food. So saying, I like food. Okay. That's, depending on what kind of food you're talking about here, that could be really, really stupid or really, really dangerous. I mean, you start the day with, I like start the day with, you know, all brand, just gets everything started, you know what I'm saying? And then, uh, <laughs> then I head into my dinner and have a, a Caesar salad and uh, some sweet potatoes and, uh, you know, a breast of chicken cooked in an air fryer, whatever they're called, because there's no fat in it or something boring like that. And 
Then in the evening I have a sandwich made from recycled cardboard or something. <laughs> and, yeah, okay, that's healthy, I'm sure. You know, chickpeas and something like that. <laughs> but it's healthy, okay? So just say, I like, I like food is a kind of a too broad a statement to be, I mean, what are you saying here? I'm spiritual. Okay, well, so is the devil. Right? Sorry. There you go. Like, what kind of spirituality are you opening your heart to? Because there's loads of stupid spirit. Like, sorry, go outside now. I'm going to take off my shoes and get in touch with Mother Earth. Mother Earth is a rock. <laughs> so you have a really big imaginary friend rock. Okay? Grow up. Mother Earth is not a spirituality. It is a rock. Okay? And while I'm, while I'm on my rant, <laughs> horoscopes. Someone explain to me how massive rocks out there in the sky can make my investments go well. Just someone, just quickly explain how that works. Or that they, these big rocks, billions of miles away, can arrange me to meet a tall, dark, handsome stranger or a tall, blondie, whatever it is supposed to be. I don't know. Someone explain that. Some logical person explain that to me. It's the most idiotic idea. Horoscopes are just completely stupid. Quote me on that. It's just rubbish. Like, spirituality, this thing is supposed to actually make sense as well. Like, spirituality doesn't mean turn off your brain, turn off logic, and it's just, oh, spiritual realities. Like, like, God reveals himself so that we can know him. He gives us evidence that what he says is true. He speaks to people, and then everything throughout sacred scripture and tradition, it all makes sense. It's all logical. All the bits make sense when you put them all together. Okay? You start inventing a spirituality of your own. That's exactly what you've done. You've invented something. Best of luck to you. I hope that can save you, but I don't really think it can. Because only Jesus can. So, like, our faith makes sense. You start taking bits and pieces out of it. You end up with nothing. You, went, like, you take, start taking bits and pieces out of your foundation or house. and Take out this room, take out that room, take out that window. What do you end up with? A shack. That'll probably fall. Well, you can't do that with like that's why our spiritual that's why the little copy of the creed that I have here in case I ever need it it's like a summary of our faith it's not made up it's given to us this is what we believe as Catholics and there's reason like there's logic behind us believing this because God revealed it to us and showed it to us and proved that it was true then by the works and the things that he did and said so it all makes sense so we have, we are engaged in a spiritual battle here. We are engaged in a spiritual battle, whether you like it or not. Okay, you can be a soldier on the field going, I don't want to be in this war. Inner peace, inner peace. And you're standing there on the battlefield, Drem 16, like going, I'm in, I'm in a happy place. I'm in a... <laughs> like, we're, we're engaged in the battle, whether we want to or not. It's going on around us. And you can say, I don't want to, I don't want to be any spiritual realities. There are, get used to it. Get used to it. Because that's just the way it is. We're surrounded, and it's like sticking your head in the sand does not make the spiritual realities disappear. So we have to actually man up. We have to actually start praying. Now, um, where is it? The line that it says here also, that how do, we, how do we defeat this? Just to finish up very briefly, I've gone on a bit too long this morning, very sorry. That's why you must rely on God's armor, or you will not be able to put up any resistance when the worst, when, not if, when the worst happens. It says put on God's armor. It doesn't say that you have to kind of just get really spiritually tough or whatever it is. It says rely on God. Rely on God. That's prayer, sacraments, consecration to Our Lady, regular rosary, confession, adoration if it's possible. Pop into the church as often as you can if you're in an area where there's lockdown. That we open our heart to all these good spiritual realities, all the, the good spiritual treasures that God offers us. All of the truth that he offers, offers us. Ironically, our psalm is, blessed be the Lord, my rock. Um, that's a different kind of a rock now, just so you know. <laughs> that's, uh, that's like, that means the Lord is solid. Okay, Jesus isn't a rock. Okay, <laughs> very good. So, we ask the good Lord today to bless each one of us in this spiritual battle, to protect us and to guide us, to reveal to us what the enemy's tactics are, so that we might recognize him at work and put up a fight against him, that we might resist his temptations, 
and become the saints that the Lord is calling us to be. <coughs> Amen.